Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to begin with something interesting. And do you know the name Steve Krish? Steve Krish. Well, if you don't know, he's a tech entrepreneur and he had a hand in the development of the optical mouse. He built one company. He sold it to Adobe. He built another company. He sold that one to Disney. And he's worth somewhere in the range of 200 to $300 million. Guy's loaded, all right? But for some reason, he does not fly privately. So get this. He's on a Delta flight sitting in first class, and he jumps onto Twitter to complain about the woman sitting next to him who's wearing a mask. So he looks at her and he says, if you take that mask off, I don't know you, I'm going to give you $100,000 to take your mask off. Apparently, he's an anti-masking guy. Uh, she says, no way. I'm keeping my mask on. I'm not going to take $100,000 to sit on this flight next to you without a mask on. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The next time I fly, I hope I'm sitting next to Steve Krish and I'm going to put on a mask on just to make a hundred grand as I'm on a couple of hours on a Delta flight. Hey, right? Hey, on that happy note, welcome to the nation's largest, most trusted show about all things digital. It's called The Kim Commando Show because, after all, I just happen to be Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess. And you're about ready to get more tech smarts because every single thing is now a tech thing. And if you're a new listener, welcome. What took you so long? We've been on the air for over 20 years. And if you're a regular listener, welcome back. Now, you can find my award-winning show on over 425 top stations throughout the United States. We're streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for my last name, Commando. And we're streaming on demand 24-7 over at getkim.com. You can get a free 30-day trial. We have discounts for seniors, service personnel, teachers, active military, and vets. And you can also hear us on the American Forces Network radio, serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in 175 countries and 200 ships at sea get the Kim Commando show. Wow. AFN, they've been broadcasting since 1942. And so proud and honored uh, to be on their airways. And I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And just a quick reminder, if you're just too dang shy to come on a big time show and podcast, I get that, you know. You can just drop me your question right on our website, commando.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim. All right, every single day, I must go to at least 30 different websites to make sure that you're up to date about all things digital, so you don't have to do that. And this is part of the show where I like to talk about the top five things that are happening in really the tech news. And we're going to start with, well, a story that's kind of creepy and Orwellian, and it's bound to get your face too. What? Well, they first appeared in Britain, Chinese-made facial recognition cameras, connected to a central data system that holds mugshots of known shoplifters and other criminals. Well, as each shopper enters the store behind the scenes, a facial scan is completed within seconds. Then if a match is made, store management, they get alerted. Now, the system is 97.8% accurate, right? Hike Vision is the name of the Chinese company that makes them. Much like TikTok, the U.S. government saying, hey, this is a national security threat because all this data is being turned over to communist China. But on the other hand, America crime is so rampant that many cities and merchants are going to say, well, this is actually maybe not a bad deal. Maybe we don't have to close shop like Walmart did in Portland. But what are these merchants supposed to do? These cameras are coming. Like I said, it's very creepy and it's very Orwellian. All right, number two on our list is suddenly in the entire tech world is raving about chat GPT. Number four, the latest iteration is here. And these computers, they are linked together to what's formed and called a large language model. And they use deep learning algorithms to correlate and summarize information gathered from these massive sets of data, usually found on the internet. So you start hearing about chat GPT four, that it can pass the bar exam, It can tell you what's wrong with you medically. It can write poetry. You can give it a description and write a picture. You can do all this much more, and they can do it in less time than the predecessor. But you have to remember that ChatGPT4 is still loaded with tons of problems. I mean, given enough time, and if I had a full law library, if I wanted to, I bet you even I could pass the bar, but I don't know if I would fully, fully comprehend and understand the law at that point. It can tell you about ballet, 
but I don't know if it really gets it. Remember, chat GPT-4, it cannot reason, it cannot empathize. And until then, it truly, truly cannot be trusted. Next on our list, car, come here. That's right, number three. Imagine you're driving down the highway and suddenly you hear a strange noise coming from your car like, hmm, what's going on with that? And you're not sure if you should pull over or just keep driving to maybe get to the nearest rest stop or service station. Well, if chat GPT was in your car, you could simply say, hey, car, what should I do? I hear a strange noise. Kind of reminds you like that kit car from Knight Ritter, doesn't it? And imagine if your car spoke back to you and said, well, you have five seconds to make the light. I think you should really go for it. Well, that tech isn't here yet, but General Motors has announced this past week that's going to work with Microsoft to put chat GPT into its cars. That's right. GM Vice President Scott Miller said chat GPT is going to be everywhere. Well, here are some of his ideas for a chat GPT powered car. If you get a flat tire, you could ask for instructions on how to change it or call AAA. In the event of an emergency, the AI is going to say, hey, you need to pull over immediately. But think about this. Remember when, just think about this. Remember when the General Motors jobs were in Flint and you couldn't drink the water in Mexico? Now? Mm, totally reversed. All right, number four, scammers are going to skim. These credit card skimmers aren't just lurking at the gas pump or ATMs anymore. They're in the self-checkout lane at grocery stores, so you got to watch out. These are called Bluetooth overlay skimmers, and they're on the rise. Now, here's the thing about these sneaky, sneaky little skimmers. The Bluetooth component lets thieves get data stolen wirelessly and virtually from any Bluetooth-enabled device just by being near that credit card terminal. Now, these skimmers are made to be placed on top of the card readers at store self-checkout lanes. So they can get you when you're scanning your candy part and your salad. So what can you do? First, always check any point of sale device for anything unusual. Give it a little tug. And when entering your PIN, cover it with your hand, even if the device claims to secure information wirelessly. And you should have this set up already, but I want to be sure that you get text alerts from your bank for any purchases that are made on your credit card when you're not actually there. And finally, this coming in at number five, you can throw away your Q-tips. What? Okay, if you just saw what I'm going to be talking about, they look like really, really expensive headphones. But if you watch them, what's going on, you see something that's kind of gross looking. The headphones start become loaded with earwax, and you can see through them. You start seeing the earwax. These are headphones of the future, folks. That's right. They're called the Ostoset Ear Cleaning System, an ear cleaning system. That's right. It's kind of gross. Um, if you're eating, you just might want to pause this for just a moment. Okay, you're, right. you're with me. These high-tech earphones have two see-through chambers on each side. Now, the top chamber is filled with this magical potion that flows through your ears to latch on to any nasty earwax while the suction inside the earphones, they actually slurp it, and then the yellow earwax juice goes back into the lower chamber. Hmm. But good news, the lower chamber is recyclable. Hmm, isn't that nice? Now, here's the deal about earwax. I'm not a doctor, and I don't play one on the internet, but it's nasty looking, but it does help trap dust, dirt, small objects, and germs from entering your ear, so you have to learn to embrace your earwax. That's right. Speaking of ears, uh, last night I was having dinner with some friends at the club and Julie asked me, you know, what do you call the strings on the corn as she's holding it up? And I said, ear hair. Get it? Ear hair. Didn't laugh. All right. Coming up in our security tip, we have some new password rules that we need to pass along. And also a big mistake that a lot of people are doing when you start installing apps and you're, you start saying like, oh, sure, you can have all my contacts. No, you don't want to do that. And of course, your phone calls on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And just a quick reminder, you can always email me your question by heading to the website. That's commando.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email cam. All right, just an administrative moment I need to tell you about real quick is that if you are getting the Kim Commando Show newsletters and we send out over 20 million a month, odds are you probably are, is that they're going through a major revamp. And so over the next couple of weeks, you're going to have a new look, a new format, less ads. You're going to love it. 
And if you used to get the newsletters and you don't get them anymore, or maybe you want to try them, head over to commando.com slash subscribe. Over 400,000 people trust our newsletters. You can unsubscribe at any time, and they are 100% free. That's commando.com slash subscribe. Oh, wow. Let me tell you, you guys and gals, we are in for such a special treat. Because uh, joining us are Ashen and Art. You might know them as Trilogy Media. They are the biggest, baddest scam fighter duos on YouTube. And let me tell you, they have just under 1 million subscribers. And yes, I'm raising my hand because I'm a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber, you should be too. Now, the reason why I love them is that they flip the script on robocallers and scammers that steal our hard-earned money out of these unsuspecting victims' pockets. You know what I'm talking about. You've heard them here on the show. I'll never forget the woman who called in. And she was 68, and she thought she was in love with a 46-year-old guy, a doctor from Australia, who ends up scamming her for $40,000. So then she goes on plenty of fish because then she's going to find somebody else. And then she meets Mr. right there, and then he says, Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry that you got scammed. I can help you. I'm a hacker and I can help get your money back. And she loses another $60,000 to a scammer. Wow. But Ashton and Art, they do things differently. Uh, like, for example, guys, thanks for being here. Let's start with some questions. Okay. Because these are questions that I get. Yeah. And one of the questions that I always get, and I love that you guys actually went there, are where are the call always. centers and why are they always in India? Well, it's um it's a it's a difficult topic because people tend to think that uh, you know we hyper focus on any one area. Uh, the truth of the matter is we only can follow where the calls lead us, where the robocalls lead us. Um, there are scams in every country over this entire planet. Uh, it just happens to be that India is full of very smart people. So mm -hmm. the Indian scams in again, which is a very tiny percentage of the population, um, the locals hate them just as much as we do. Uh, but those people are very smart, so their scams are very much uh, tech-centric, uh, robocall-centric. Mm -hmm. So when you get those robocalls and those computer remote connection scams, those are just happen to be the ones that India focuses on. You know how we have um, uh, Pablo Escobar? Used to have Pablo Escobar in Colombia. There is uh, another bad guy in India who runs so many undercover uh, fake call centers in Kolkata. And Kolkata is an amazing city. We went uh, last year, we took India and we went from Bangladesh to Pakistan and we took that beautiful country and we, from one border to another border for three weeks, we did, you know, filming. We did a lot of uh, investigations, glitter bombing them from the inside. You know, like we did a lot of stuff. Okay, that's what I want. I want you to explain that. I know, number, number one, what gave the idea to do the cockroaches and the glitter bomb? <laughs> and how did that how did that all come down? Well, it was a massive team effort. Yes. We certainly can't take all the credit for no. that. Uh, we have to credit. We had weekly Zoom meetings every Sunday morning for about a year, a year. to orchestrate this. We had uh, over a dozen undercover agents working in these various centers for uh, you know close to a year. Um, it took a lot of planning. Uh, it took a lot of risks and a lot of uh, effort, a lot of money, a lot, lot of money. resources yes. ended up being more risks than we bargained for. But it was worth it. It was so much fun. And, it, you know, it, it it does a bigger job than just pranking the workers. Like it raises awareness when you can get that many creators uh, putting something out to that many millions of viewers. It raises awareness about how the scams work. It uh, shines a light on a place that usually doesn't have any light shined on it. So we were able to shut yeah, down some sure. call centers while doing yeah, so. Sure. The so. owners of call centers were so afraid that we brought FBI from America and we team up with uh, CBI, which is like Indian FBI uh, uh, mm -hmm. police. Mm -hmm. And they went on the cop, they went like so silent for like a couple of weeks, which means all these call centers that they went dry did not scam Canada, America, Europe, uh, UK, Australia, nice. anybody. Nice. So they lost a lot of money. It cost which, them millions of dollars. Yeah, millions yeah. of dollars. And that operation was, again, prepared for almost a year. Uh, every single Sunday, no matter what you're doing, 10, 15 people every Sunday when Zoom call trying to get this going. And we did. We smuggled all these glitter bombs. We went to the uh, market. <laughs> we get cockroach, uh, cockroaches. We got uh rats we got explosions going on and uh, we made some noise <laughs> you certainly did 
So what do you think is what do you think is the the most widespread scam right now? Aside from romance scams, what do you think is the biggest scam that people are falling for right now? Right now, the one that we see probably more often than not is one we call or that scam baiting uh, calls the refund scam. Uh, so, you know, you check your text or your voicemail or your email and you see that you were char- the, an invoice, essentially. It's a fake invoice sent to you from a call center pretending to be a very well-known company like Amazon or Norton or PayPal, Best Buy, whatever. They tell you you were charged for some kind of crazy, fraudulent, whatever. Um, but all it is is a ruse for you to call the phone number back so they can remote connect to your computer. I've been fielding a lot of phone calls. Yeah. Uh, like I had a guy who called it and... He got a call from Apple Enterprise Servers, mm-hmm. okay, uh, and said that they found kitty porn in his iCloud account and they needed money to clean out his iCloud account. And oh, so, so he gave them, I, I don't understand this, he gave them $150,000 in gift cards. Stories just like that are literally what we hear every single day, and it's absolutely heartbreaking. And that's what we try to accomplish in our videos is not just to confront the scammers, because that's very, you know, obviously it, it feels good to bring justice, but more importantly, to show how these scams play out and what tactics the scammers use to get you from that point to that point to send that much money so more people can learn about it and look for the red flags. All right. I'll tell you what, guys, we need to take a quick break. I love what you're doing, but I want to know more about the work that you're doing catching predators online. So when we come back, let's get into all of that, along with some other ways that you have caught scammers in the act. And once again, folks, if you want to check out their YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash Trilogy Media. Once again, that's youtube.com slash Trilogy Media. We have more of this interview coming up that you don't want to miss, as well some more tips and phone calls on the Kim Commando Today podcast. All right, if you're just joining us, we've been talking to Ashton and Art. You might know them from Trilogy Media. They are the biggest and baddest scam fighting duo on YouTube. They have just under 1 million subscribers and their mission, I just love this. They track down the scammers and the predators. All right, guys, let's talk about how you recently caught some online predators. Um, I personally, I get the most thrill by going after people that prey on people that are weaker than them. And that covers predators, child predators, that covers people that scam people that are elderly, all that stuff. So we recently got into it. We have the, the fortune now of having a following and we're able to collab with a lot of other big creators that have done this a lot more than us. Like um, Courtney Elizabeth. Courtney Elizabeth. Um, we have some more coming up uh, very soon. But uh, yeah, in this particular video and the the couple that preceded it, we uh, set up a sting house in Glendale, California. We have our team, including Courtney, that goes into these um, chat rooms and dating apps and pretends to be an underage girl and uh, always waiting for the predator to make the first contact. That's key. Uh, But they do all the time. And we record all the communication and then we tell them, hey, you can come. And uh, the, the young child allegedly tells them, you can come meet us or meet me at, at this house. Yep. And then we're there to confront them with cameras and police. This is really fascinating technology. I'm talking about all the deep fakes, the deep fake for video and for audio. And how, for example, there was that grandmother who got recently who got a call from her grandson, Brandon, and Brandon was in jail, of course, and he didn't have any money. And Granny loves him. And but but and then but the the scammers got enough of Brandon's voice off of his TikTok channel so that Brandon actually sounded like Brandon. Mm-hmm. Have you run into any of that yet? They tried to get my grandmother um, with that exact scam. They called my grandmother. This is a couple of years back, uh, but they pretended to be me. Uh, They called my grandma and said, hey, uh, Jane, uh, your grandson Ashton got arrested for DUI in Mexico and he needs bail money. Best thing you can do is to just do your due diligence and do not let anyone ever pressure you to do something quickly. Um, Amazon and PayPal are never going to call you. Um, the, the police station in another country is never going to call you and demand money for bail money. Like if you're being pressured to do something, whether it's gift cards, computer access, whatever it is, take, take, them back. take a minute, hang up the phone, call a loved one, call an authority, call somebody, get an outside opinion. If you're not sure if anyone's ever pressuring you to do something quickly like that, chances are they're trying to dupe you. They're trying to catch you off guard. That's why it's very important to take a, take a breath 
get out from this call, hang up and talk to either your family, friends, your neighbors and say like, hey, there is something happening. All of a sudden, Sheriff, because I didn't pay taxes last year, 20 bucks, he want to put me for 10 years in jail. What's going on? Should I go to jail or what? Or if this is paid. <laughs> so they try to bring that personal manipulation to scare you and, and make you to make that rational decision on the spot, which is immediately red flag. Exactly. I mean, that whole sense of urgency. You got to do this right now. Um, I had I, I had a gal on the show right not too long ago. Okay, for three years, three years. That's a long time. Three years, she was in Google Chat with a guy. Never videoed him, never talked to him on the phone. Yep. Just three years, sent him a hundred thousand dollars because he was working on an oil rig. Of course, they are this one uh, outside of Ireland. And she called me to ask me if I thought she was getting scammed. And I tried to point out all the things, all the red flags to her. But at the end, she did not want to believe that she was getting scammed. What do you do with somebody like that? It's funny you said that. We released a video uh, right at the end of last year in, in December. Um, it was a two and a half hour YouTube video. Yeah, uh, a movie. Talking to this woman named Jody who was in a very similar situation. In fact, she had been talking to this guy for almost eight years and she had been sending him oh, her wow. social security check, her disability check every month for eight years to this guy. Um, we collabed with a whole nother YouTube channel. We put months of work into it um, and it was a two and a half hour video. And there was a little bit of like investigation and confronting and traveling and trying to confront the, the money mules and people that were involved. But Plus interviews with her face to face. Well, that's what I was going to say. Most of the video was a study about her whatever disorder. I'm not a psychiatrist, but whatever she's struggling with, no matter how much proof we put in front of her, she at the end of the day ended up unblocking him and continuing to send him money. Is that right? Really? You cannot control it. I mean, uh, and if you, and uh, we get emails from people all the time that have relatives in a similar situation. And I tell them every single time, it's like, you're not, if you haven't convinced them yet, you're probably not going to be able to. The best thing I can recommend is that you just require a video chat. That's the thing is she had never video chatted him in eight years. And she believed she was about to marry him. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's funny, but it's not funny because it's a, such a big issue. And she said, Hey, I'm lonely. I'm looking for a relationship. I want to believe in this fairy tale. That's why it's deeper. It's way deeper than money. Hey, guys, yeah. thanks for being in here. And uh, for everybody who's listening and joining us, make sure you subscribe to the Trilogy Media channel over on YouTube because you guys are putting out a bunch of great, great stuff, truly. And thanks for everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. All right. So let's talk about some ways that you can avoid being taken by scammers. Of course, obviously, number one, you want to be really careful of any unsolicited emails, phone calls, text messages. Scammers are using these methods to get contact with potential victims. Next, you know the, my mantra, stop and think, don't click the link. Don't click on links or download attachments from unknown sources. You want to be careful about sharing your personal information, I'm talking about your banking account, your social security number. Uh, you want to be skeptical of anything that just seems to be too good to be true. There are common scams, lottery scams, phishing scams. There are just so many different scams out there. Make sure that you keep your computer, all your devices updated with the latest software patches and security software uh, take a look at your financial accounts and credit reports. Look for any unusual activity and really trust your instincts. If something feels off, something feels suspicious, it's best to err on the side of caution. Do not engage with the potential scammer. Do not engage. Just delete it. If you have any other questions about scams or if you wonder if you're getting scammed, I want you to know that you can always reach out to me. I'm going to be your digital partner to make sure that you never, ever get taken by these scammers. I'll tell you what, folks, if you're looking for some great videos to watch, or maybe there's someone in your family who's getting scammed and they don't want to believe you, well, head over to youtube.com slash Trilogy Media, and there may be some videos there where you could prove that they are, in fact, getting scammed. Once again, that's youtube.com slash Trilogy Media. And guys, thanks for being here. All right. We're going to have to talk about passwords. I hate them. I just can't stand passwords. But I will tell you, I have come up with a way where I can remember passwords and have a unique password for every single website that I visit. And if you can't do that, you can always use a password manager. But you do have to start at the basis. And that is, what constitute a good password? And if somebody says you need to update your password, well, 
how do you update that? Well, the worst thing you do is just go ahead and add a number or a character at the end because the scammers know this. Okay. And then also you want to stop using common passwords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then some people say, oh, I'm going to get so, so bad at this. I'm going to get so, so clever at this. I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. Also, password is a bad password. QWERTY, uh, lover boy, sexy boomer, whatever it may be. We don't want to ever use a word in the dictionary. And you want to start using characters instead of letter. So instead of maybe the letter A, you're going to use the at sign. Instead of an I, you use an exclamation point. And don't worry, we have all these rules written down over on the website. I just want to talk to you about it for just a sec. Now, sites like Amazon, TikTok, Netflix, Etsy, The Wall Street Journal, uh, research has found that they have failed to block easily guessed passwords. So you used to come up and say, oh, this is a strong password. You're like, okay, yes, I'm secure. So what you want to do is you want to come up with a phrase that means something to you, such as, I am totally in love with the Kim Commando show. So instead of the I, it's an exclamation point. A T instead of an O for totally, it's a zero. So you come up with a phrase that makes sense to you. Now, if you need help figuring all this out, look no further than the official homepage of the Kim Commando show, which is commando.com, of course. And there you want to hit the link that says Kim Show. All right, still to come, we have more of your phone calls as well as a big rule of thumb that I want us all to remember whenever you install apps. And if you've already made this mistake, we're going to tell you how you can fix it on the Kim Commando Today podcast. All right, before we go back to your phone calls, just want to remind you that you should be following on social. Wherever you are, I am there at Kim Commando. So whether you're at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, it's at Kim Commando. Instagram is more of my personal life, just to let you know. So you're going to see stuff about what I do when I'm not on the air and I'm not trying to fix tech or whatever it may be. Again, that's Instagram.com slash Kim Commando, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are, it's always at Kim Commando. All right, back to the phones we go with Charles in Roanoke, Virginia. Hello there, Charles. Hey, Kim. Huge fan here. Thanks for taking my call. You betcha. I usually thought I was pretty good at detecting phishing emails and similar scams, but I recently fell prey to an interesting ad on Facebook, and then that led to uh, something new I'm learning about called a brushing scheme. Hmm. And I hope you can help me with that. So tell me what happened. Yeah, so uh, as Facebook is wanting to do, um, like search engines that follows our browsing and search patterns, and I had been looking for raised bed garden planters, and it started feeding me ads for such. And one ad looked good, too good mm -hmm. to be true, which I know usually is the case. But I decided even if it was poor quality, I could spare the $50 chance, if you will. Well, right after I placed my order, that's when my spidey sense kicked in. And um, so I Googled the company name without specifying the URL. I couldn't really find it, either as a legitimate site or any scam reports at all. Then I looked up the credit card charge, saw it was in China, found uh, what clearly appeared to be false reviews, and I called my bank. They showed the merchant, but admitted there was no 800 number that's usually associated with the merchants. So I immediately contested the charge, canceled my credit card. That part was good. And although I was embarrassed, I thought it was over, but not so quickly. Yeah. A couple of weeks later, uh, there was a small flat package in my mailbox with a double label, one over the other. And inside was this ugly silk scarf that I didn't order. And this time, my Google search <laughs> yielded <laughs> information about brushing scams. And they said that while my financial information was likely not at risk, my personal information was. If this is something that they do it, people try to return the, the object that was sent to them, and that's when they confirm your address and your personal information. And they start posting yeah. false reviews in your name. Yeah, and that's, that's what the brushing scam is, is that they send you, like you said, an ugly scarf uh, that you didn't want, you didn't order yeah. it. And so that this way you'll be able to write reviews and then you show up as a verified purchaser and that boosts the seller ratings. This is a really, really big problem on Amazon. Uh, and it's usually like cheap or low quality items like you saw scarves, maybe a screen protector, headphones, earbuds seem to be a lot of that, uh, candles, power supplies. And, you know, it's it's something that I think the likes of Facebook and uh, Amazon and the others are aware of, but it's kind of hard to stop it. And a lot of people just say, well, what do I do? Okay. I mean, can I mail it back? No. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and so the general consensus, well, you get, well, you know what, you get to keep that ugly scarf, Charles. So, I mean, think about it. You could, you could, you could use it at Halloween. Okay. I mean, think about it. 
I mean, <laughs> we'll put a little skirt on you. Those hairy legs will hang out on some sneakers and, uh, and you put the scarf over your head like a babushka and, you know, and, and go to a party and everybody will say, uh, what happened to Charles? Is he, is he transitioning? Is he transitioning? <laughs> no, no, he's not. I swear. <laughs> he's not. He's not. Okay, but is my identity hanging out there more than that and, and unmasked? <laughs> well, you know, there's so many times that the people are falling for this, but it's it's always a good idea to freeze your credit anytime you make you do something that you know now that you shouldn't have done. And we've got the steps on how to freeze the credit at the big agencies. So this way, if somebody wants to get into it, that they can, uh, you know, that at least you'll be notified that somebody's trying to tap into your credit report. And but of course, like, you know, you did the right thing. I mean, you know, you changed the credit cards, right? You got rid of that one. Uh, It might be a good idea just for giggles to change your passwords, Uh, set up some two factor authentication if you haven't already done that. And also uh, make a complaint at the Internet Crime Complaint Center. That's IC3. Dot gov, and that's the FBI. Okay. And so, well, they go after this guy because you got the ugly scarf and you didn't get your planter. Probably not. But if they get enough of ugly scarves and planters, then they can figure out, yeah, this is really something that's uh, something that's that's happening, and that we need to at least get involved and try to stop it so that it doesn't uh, continue on. And still, yeah, it's just. It's just overall, let me tell you, it's just overall, it's a bad idea. It's just a bad idea to buy things off of Facebook ads. Just go to the website, um, go to Amazon, go to Walmart, Target, wherever you go, because a lot of this is just junk being shipped directly from China. Uh, Charles, thank you so much for your call. And if you do wear that scarf, send me a pic. You know, just some rules of thumb. If you ever receive a package that you didn't order, especially it's from a foreign country, unknown sender, you need to be suspicious. Don't open the package up. Then you also want to check your online accounts to see if any of these unauthorized purchases were made. Be sure that you change your password, enable two-factor authentication. You also want to keep an eye on your credit report to make sure that no fraudulent accounts have been opened up in your name. And if you do receive an unsolicited package or suspect that you have been a victim of a brushing scam, report that activity to whatever website it came from. You also want to contact your local post office and law enforcement. All right, think about your phone's contact list. What does it have? Photos, names, email addresses, birthdays, work numbers, some notes. Now, sometimes it may be like, oh, okay, well, maybe Twitter or Meta, they're actually being nice. And when I go onto their service or use their app, it says, would you like to uh, connect your address book, your contact list with your profile so that this way more people can know about you? It even happens in online games. And then you're like, oh, thank you, big tech, for always looking out for me. Of course you can do that. All right, don't do that. Your friend and family's personal data is theirs. It's not yours to give away. And if you've already done this, I want you to go into your settings of wherever you did it and disconnect that so this way they don't get all the updates. So just remember, that contact list, your device's address book, it is yours, okay? It contains your personal information. Do not share the information of your family members and friends. It's not yours to give up. Hey, do me a favor, tell three friends about The Kim Commando Show. And don't forget, we always are available as a podcast. Great content on the go. Just search for Commando with a K. And if you need more info, it's at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.